Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the PyTorch for audio and music processing. In the previous video in the series we saw how we can pre-process our audio data on GPU. This time we're gonna build a sound classifier using a simple uh, VGG architecture, of course using PyTorch. In other words we're gonna be building a simple neural network using convolutional layers. Okay, so let's get started here. And so we need to import some initial goods from PyTorch, which are gonna be instrumental to build uh, our model. So we'll do a from torch, we want to import NM. Okay, so what next? Well, we need to implement the uh, main uh, architecture. So the main neural network class. So we'll do class and we'll call this CNN nets work. Okay, and of course, if we want a uh, network built using the PyTorch framework, we need for this class to inherit from nn.module. Okay, so we already saw this a few videos back in the series. So for building a network using PyTorch, we need at least to define a couple of methods. So the constructor, where we're gonna put all of our different layers for the network, and then the forward method that's gonna instruct PyTorch on how to uh, pass the information, pass the data from one layer to the next. Okay, so let's start with the constructor here. Okay, like this, and then we're gonna do super dots in it. We're gonna be building a simple VGG network using convolutional layers. So let's take a look at the architecture before implementing it. So first thing, I'm gonna have four different convolutional, so four convolutional blocks. Then, out of the output of the last convolutional block, what I want to do is flatten the results. So I have a flattened layer. Then I'm gonna apply a linear layer. And finally, I'm gonna have a softmax. I'm gonna apply softmax. And that's because uh, in our data set, Urban Sound uh, 8K data set, we have 10 different classes that we want to uh, distinguish between. Okay, so let's get started with the convolutional blocks. So we'll start for, from the first convolutional block. So we'll say self.conv1, and this is equal to nn.sequential. So what's sequential? We already saw this uh, class in a previous video, and here you can think of sequential as a container where you can put a bunch of layers in it and expect for PyTorch to process the layers sequentially, passing the data from one layer to the next in a sequential way. Okay, so our convolutional block is gonna be uh, made up of three parts, three elements. The first one is a convolutional layer, then we're gonna apply non-linearity, specifically we're gonna apply rectified linear unit, and finally we're gonna apply max pooling. Okay, so let's start, well not bb, but rather nn.com2d. So here we should pass a bunch of parameters to our convolutional layer. The first of which is gonna be the in channel, so the number of input channels, and we know that our input data has one channel. So we're treating our spectrograms as grayscale images. Okay, so in channels is equal to one, then what next? Well, output channels. So we'll put the value here equal to 16. In other words, we're gonna have 16 filters in our convolutional layer. Then we want to specify the kernel size, and this is gonna be equal to three, quite usual value for kernels in convolutional layers. Then we can apply, or we're gonna, well, set the stride equal to one, and finally, padding equal to two. Okay, so now, next step is that of applying a, a rectified linear unit. So we'll do nn dot relu. And last step will be the max pooling layer. So we'll do nn dot max pool 2d and we should set the current size and we'll set it equal to 2. 
Some of you will be familiar with convolutional layers. Some of you may not, but don't worry. You can check out my video up here regarding convolutional layers and convolutional neural networks. And there you'll get all the information you need to follow along with this uh, video. Okay, so here we have the convolutional um, layer or block number one. I said that I want four convolutional blocks. So what am I gonna do here? Well, simply I'm gonna copy paste this four times, well, three times. So convolution block two, three, and four. Okay, so now let's modify these guys. So we'll do a self-conv two. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to modify here in this conv2d uh, class or constructor, really. So the in channels, in this case, is equal to 16, and that is equal to the output channels of the previous convolutional layer. And our new output channels is gonna be equal to 32. I'm just gonna double the value. And I'm gonna do the same thing also here for conv3. So the in channels is gonna be equal to 32, the output channel equal to 64, and finally here with self com 4 the input channel uh, value is going to be equal to 64 and this equal to 128. If you are wondering if it's, this is the best way of creating a CNN architecture, well, actually it is not. So if you want to have a, an architecture that's way more dynamic, what you should do is passing all of these values for the different convolutional layers in your constructor so that then you can uh, build your convolutional blocks in a dynamic way. And I've done this multiple times in previous series, but I'm not gonna do it this time because I just want to have like a very quick and dirty way of like showing you how to build a CNN network with PyTorch. Okay. So now we have our four convolutional layers. What next? Well, we set it here. So we want to flatten the output, the multidimensional output of the last convolutional layer or convolutional block. Okay, so here we'll have a layer called self.flatten. Uh, well, flatten it's with double T. And this is equal to nn.flatten. Okay. What next? Well, now that we've flattened data, we're ready to pass it to a dense layer, which in PyTorch is called a linear layer. So we'll do a self.linear uh, and we'll say nn.linear. Okay, so here we should pass a couple of arguments to the constructor of the linear uh, uh, layer here. So as you can see, in features and out features. So in features is the number of, of features as input and the out features is the number of outputs that we want. Okay, so what about the inputs? Well, I'm gonna cheat here and just like take this value from here and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing in a second. So, what's this? Well, this is the output, the shape of the data that is output from the last convolutional block. So this is equal to 128, which by the way is the number of output channels, by five by four, right? And now if we multiply this, this should be equal to the size of this flattened tensor here, right? So 128 by five by four, right? Okay, so this is the input that we expect. Now, what about the output? Well, the output is equal to the number of classes that we have in our urban sound dataset. And that is 10 different classes. Okay, so what next? Well, now that we have this a linear layer, the next thing is to apply softmax so that we can normalize the uh, results across all the different 10 um, categories that we have. So we'll do a self.softmax uh, and we'll say nn.softmax and we'll set this to dimension equal to one. Okay, so here we have the constructor of our CNN network class with all the different layers that we are interested in. Now it's time to implement the forward method. 
forward and will pass the input data as an argument. So here, in this forward method, we should decide or we should tell PyTorch how to pass information, pass data from one layer to the next. Okay, so this is quite straightforward, really. So we'll say x is equal to self.conv1 and we'll pass the input data. So now we have this x tensor and what should we do with that? Well, this is very simple. We are going to pass it to self.com2. So we'll do self.conv2 and we'll pass x. So what next? Well, we should repeat the same thing for a couple of times more. So we'll do self.com3 and self.com4. So that as you can see, we're just passing uh, the results from one layer to the next like this. Okay. So what next? Well, same thing. We need to pass this tensor, this the 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 results of the last convolutional layer to the flatten layer. So here we'll say x is equal to self dot flatten and we'll pass x in here. Okay. So now the moment we pass this tensor to the linear layer, we get our logits back. Okay, so we'll say, well, it's not slef, but it's self dot uh, linear and we'll pass x. Finally, we're going to get our predictions by passing our logits to uh, softmax. So we'll do self dot softmax and we'll pass our logits. Cool. And now we'll return the predictions. Okay, that's it. So we have our VGG uh, sound uh, classifier. Is this the best uh, network architecture that we can use for sound classification? For for example, the urban sound 8K dataset? Well, absolutely not. But as I said, here it's not really about performance. It's about showing you how to use PyTorch for uh, sound classification in conjunction, of course, with Torch Audio, and we learned quite a lot about Torch Audio in the previous uh, videos, but it's not really about getting the best performance. We don't care about that. So you can experiment with this once you have the basics. Cool. Okay, so now what next? Well, uh, I just want to show you a summary of the network showing the different uh, shapes, uh, the shape of the data moving from one layer to the next. So how can we do this? Well, we can use another package, which is called Torch Summary. And from Torch Summary, we're going to import Summary. Now, Torch Summary is doesn't come directly with Torch, but rather you have to pip install it. But I put it also in this requirements uh, .txt file. So if you are installing all of the requirements through this requirements .txt file, then you just have it. Cool. Okay, so now let's see how we can use this summary. So we just need to start a new script. So we'll say if name is equal to main, then first of all, we need to create a CNN a network so we need to instantiate CNN network and then we can use summary so summary takes a couple of arguments so one is the model and two is the input size so we'll pass here CNN our model and then the input size. I already know the shape of the input and that's the shape of the spectrograms or melt spectrograms that we extracted in the previous video from the urban sound data set. Okay, so, and that is equal to this shape here. So 164.44. So one is the number of channels, so just one, a grayscale image basically. Then 64, this is the, the frequency axis. So this is the number of melt bands. And then 44 is the time axis. Okay, so let's run this and hopefully this is gonna work. We have an error, but this is an intentional error. So as you can see, the input uh, type is a torch.cuda float tensor, whereas the model 
is a torch dot float tensor, and they should be on the same device, so either on GPU, so CUDA, or on CPU. Now, if I want to, so they're basically, so the, the error is basically saying that I have this on CPU, whereas I have this input size on GPU. So if I want this model on uh, CPU, so I'm going to do cnn.cuda like this. So this should solve the error. Uh, now, if you don't have CUDA, um, of course, you don't need to, to put this one in, right? Okay, so let's rerun this and hopefully this is gonna work. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh, it works. So here we have our summary. So first column, we have our layer type. Then we have the output shape for each layer and the number of parameters. So this is our initial, or number one convolutional block with the convolutional layer, ReLU activation and max pooling. And so as you can see, this is a four dimensional tensor. So the first uh, dimension is just like the, the batch size. So we don't really care at this moment. So, but then we have 16, the number of channels, and then we have the, the, the frequency axis as well as the, the, the time axis. And you see how the output sh uh, changes or the shape of the output changes over time until we get here to this max pooling 2D, which is part of, is the last element of the last convolutional block. And as you can see here, we have 128 by four by five, which by the way, is what we used here in the uh, linear, as an input for the linear layer. And that's because all of these values get basically multiplied and you get this value that you're gonna be using as an input for the linear layer. And here as an output, you have 10, which is the different 10 classes that you have, and then uh, you just apply softmats to that. Okay, so this is great. Now we know how to build a simple CNN-like network. And so what next? Well, in the next video, we're gonna be using this CNN network along with some scripts that we already built, so namely the training script for training our classifier, our CNN network on the urban sound dataset. And for that, we're gonna also create a data loader using our urban sound dataset class, which is our PyTorch custom class that took us a lot of videos to go through it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna see you soon in the next video. If you did like this video, please remember to leave a like. That helps the channel a lot because it helps sharing its content. So I guess that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.